here to come over here. All right. Well, hey there, Deshaun. How are you? I got a special guest tonight. So those of you that are over on Instagram may want to come over here on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter. Hey, you guys, how you doing? Hey, Melita. Danielle. Hey there, Ordinary Mommy. How are you? Can you see the chat? Mm -hmm. I, it's it. I have it on here. On the okay. mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for this one to kick in. Hey, y'all, how you doing? I sound a real country right now, but that's all right. <laughs> there they go. Hey, Kim, there they go. There they are. I can see it. Hey, just be real. Hey, Lotus Flower. <laughs> my special guest. See, you guys over here on Instagram don't know who my special guest is. I got a special <laughs> guest on my on my uh, forum. Hey there, Arlene. Oh, uh, she came on late for us ladies. Oh, flowers. She says, oh, uh, look, surprise. Look who I got on here. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hey there, Dana. How are you? Oh, hey, thank you, Jesus, girl. She's so sweet. See you guys over here on Instagram. You guys don't know who the surprise is, Miss Telsha T with the was it T on MPD and relationship over here on the other. Go to if you go to Facebook, if you go to YouTube, if you go to Twitter, you'll see Miss Telsha over here. So you guys want to see? I don't even know if I can turn this around where they can see you. Hold on. Okay. Hey Arlene, I see you. Hey, hey everybody. Let me see if I can get this to turn around. Let me see if I can get you guys to turn around so you can see her. So you can see both of us. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see. Hey, Stevie Bananas. What? He's in the house. He said, Buenas noches, mi amigos and amigas. Let's see here. I don't know if I can turn this all the way around. Let me see. Let me see if I can point this at the camera. Okay. Let's see if I can turn this around. Oh, you guys won't be able to see. So you guys can't see. Yeah, I can't get this thing to turn around. I can't get it to turn around. On a, if I turn it around, you guys won't see me. Hey, Angela. Hey there, yo. Hey, Belly of uh, Papillon. Pa 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 hey there. Hey there. You made jewelry in college. You know what, Stevie Bananas, you do everything. <laughs> You do tattoos. <laughs> tattoos too. We haven't seen Stevie in a minute, huh? I know. Where you been, Stevie? Yeah, where you been at? Thank you, Angela. I appreciate you. Hey, Rigga, how are you? We got all these accounts open at one time. There we go. Hello. Mark Warriors Golden. So if you guys don't know, I have Miss Telsha Edenbury. That's T on MPD and Relationship. If you guys have not subscribed to her channel, make sure you go check out her channel. She's here with me tonight. She came out of her busy evening to come be with me tonight. Her big sister. Right. That's the boss. <laughs> oh, that's my girl. Big sis, that's the boss. Right. Uh, I, I gotta look at you in the camera, and I got to look up into the camera. <laughs> well, y'all, if so, you guys over here on Instagram, you'll just be able to listen in. I'm going to start the clubhouse for so those of you guys that would like to join us on Clubhouse. I'm going to start the clubhouse. She's on Clubhouse too. So, those of you that are on Instagram, if you guys want to listen to her over on Clubhouse. We're going to have a conversation, you guys. Hey, Miss Aunt Pat. Hey, Barbette. How you get up there? Let me put you back down. Hey there, yo. Hey, Jamila. Hey, Doc. Kiko. Jar. 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 Kirby. Mar Marlon. Is it Marlon? Marlon. Hey there. Hey, you guys. You're subscribed to both of our channels. Thank you. We appreciate you. Yeah, we do. We appreciate that. Kim said there's an echo on your end. On my end? Let me see. Can you guys hear okay? Hello there. Hey, y'all, you hear echo too? I don't hear it. It was an echo on your side. I think it's me talking on your camera. Oh, okay. Is it still there? Okay, let me see. Yeah. <laughs> it is? Yeah. Uh, let me because go out. You won't be able to hear anything. 
Just Be Real says, screaming, hey, Telshin. <laughs> we miss you too, Stevie Bananas. Hey, Shirley. Echo, echo. Is that better? But y'all can hear us. Hey, you guys on Instagram. Hey there, um, all my uh, Clubhouse family. How are you guys doing? Valerie, Nina, Max, uh, Santosha. Hey, Santosha, Valerie. Hey there. Well, let's get started then. All right, Just Be Real. You got, give us until... Okay, I don't know what time you have. It's nine o'clock my time. So it'll be nine o'clock me and Telsha's time, which is I don't know if you're um central uh central time, um just be real. So you know it's two hours in Texas, three hours on the East Coast. So give us until the hour. So you're not gonna be on all night tonight. Okay, hold on, let me close this. Just be real. So we're gonna be on give us till the hour, okay? And what okay? Yeah, give us to the hour. Give us the hour. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, Clubhouse, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to, we're gonna open it, we're gonna have a big sister, cousin, auntie, whatever you want to call us tonight. We're gonna have a conversation as if me and Telsa are sitting on your couch just having a conversation. And we're gonna let me bring you up here. Okay. We'll bring her up here. There we go. Uh oh. Now it's really echoing. You hear it? Yeah, I turned I turned mine all the way down. Okay, let me turn mine down. I'm gonna put on my uh my ear, my um because okay. then that way it'll just put it in my ear. Okay. Hey Samara. Let me get some earphones too. Hey Samara. Okay. Samara. Oh, I'm just hollering in the camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm hollering out so country, y'all. My bad. <laughs> no, Stevie Glenn not ladies' night. No. No, don't don't go anywhere. Stay here. <laughs> Nina, she said she says she's gonna put on her earphones. Yeah, Stevie, don't go nowhere. We need your insight too. You have clubhouse? Well, come on over here, Danielle. Come on over to Clubhouse. Those of you that are on Instagram that would like to hear uh, Miss Telsha speaking as well, you guys come over here to Clubhouse. Okay, don't go nowhere. Samara. Samara. I can't get up. If I get up, I tear down all these. Uh... Hold on, let me turn this around. I tear down. I can't even turn the camera around. I tear down all my stuff. Okay. Well, y'all, we're going to have a conversation. And um, those of you that are on Clubhouse know that I normally have a topic. I talk about a topic and then I answer questions and then I close the all the other ports down and then I go over to Clubhouse. Well, tonight I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to keep all the ports open. Me and Telsha, we're going to have a conversation. We want you to join in and ask questions. So Clubhouse, uh, instead of me um, waiting until after you know I'm done and clicking over, you guys are going to interact with us while we have this conversation now we sit now just imagine you guys close your eyes me and telsha are sitting in your living room and we just having a conversation we're going to start a conversation and we want you guys to get to uh to ask questions you guys interject say something that's including you two on um, clubhouse you can ask questions and i hold it up where they can hear you um on the other portal so tonight we were going to talk about red flags and uh, i have to remember to look up in the camera Oh, we're going to talk about red flags. Okay, here we go. Red flags and that unanswered question, why? You always, I know, I know you as a coach, I know you hear that question a lot, especially when you're dealing with people that are just fresh out of it. You hear them like, well, I just don't understand why. Why are they like this? Why do they do this? I don't understand. So I know that's probably some of the questions you get, right? Yes, all the time. So... Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some red flags. Now, this is for people coming out. This is for people trying to date. This is for people that just want to know. And I don't know, you want me to start it off or you want to start? Go go right ahead, boss. Let's do it. Okay, let's so go. how about, let's say, let me think for a minute. So this is a conversation that I've heard before. And now, and this is not just the first time I've heard it. I hear it quite often. Normally, mm -hmm. when a person asks me a question, they'll say, when they're asking in reference to maybe if this person might be a narc, the mm -hmm. first thing they'll say is, um, you know, I haven't dated in a long time. Mm -hmm. Usually when they say I haven't dated in a long time or it's been this long, 
right then it lets me know that that narcissist has had enough time to start bringing down your defenses. And yeah. right now you're starting to justify because now you're like, I haven't dated in a long time. Why are you justifying that when you say that you're telling yourself, but you're speaking out loud to me when you say and that's and, and like I said, it's not pointed at any individuals, but I've heard this over and over again. That's the first thing I say is when you say I haven't dated in a long time and I was just wondering if you start the conversation off like that, I already know that the narcissist has had enough conversation with you to bring down your defenses. Absolutely. You yeah, absolutely. Because see what happens is, you know, I got to be myself, you know, the bird. <laughs> <laughs> These Chinese crests, boy, I tell you. So what happens, and it's just like you said, when you're talking to them and they're saying that you already know that that narcissist has probably started like Turn from that love bomb going over into probably maybe getting into that devalue. Turn your mic on. Okay, hold on just a second. Oh, it may not be on. Okay, it's not on on Clubhouse. Sorry, sorry about that, y'all. Okay, so there we go. So yeah, so the narcissist is basically going over into the devalue, but see, they're going back and forth. So, cause you know, when they hit that devalue, they don't really know, you know, we don't really know we're in devalue yet. We just kind of like, you know, so they've done something that was kind of like, Ooh, let me take a step back, you know, and then they looking at this bird like, what? So then they come and ask questions. That's going to start them to asking questions because they already know something don't feel right. Because I don't know about you. Most of y'all are probably going to testify that within the first two weeks of that thing, y'all knew something was wrong. Tell me, I'm, tell me I'm not telling the truth. Tell me I'm, I, I, it's not true. I'm going to tell you because guess what? Your spirit already knows, especially if you are a person that carries light, okay? And I'm not going to go into the whole religious, but I'm just saying people that are empathic in nature, y'all already know something was wrong. Something was wrong within the first two weeks. So, boss, I'm telling you, yes, sis, it's the truth. That narcissist is already starting in on them. Already. They're going into the devalue, and they don't know what's happening, so they got to come and seek help. Now, what about, what about the very first thing most people think is, is, wow, I've never met a person like this before. And they seem perfect. Mm. They, they seem perfect. I've never met someone like this. No mm. one has ever been that interested in conversations with me. They're good listeners. You mm. know, wow, I've never, my, my, and you, you feel your emotions everywhere. Mm. All of a sudden, if you've talked to them at least twice, all of a sudden, your emotions. Matter of fact, let me back it up some. Mm -hmm. They're talking to you. You've never met anybody like this, but your mind is already the bought the house. Mm -hmm. Let me turn my microphone on. Okay. Are, in your mind, you have already bought the house. You don't have kids by this person. You're starting to think of a future, and all you know is you don't talk to them but twice. What you think? Woo! Because that first time when they hit you with the law bomb. That love bomb was just, it was, it was just off the hook. It was off the hook. You was just like, they, they hit you with that love bomb and some of them got hit with the hook of sex on the first night. Some of them got hit with it on the first night because they just that smooth. They are just that smooth. So, so, you know, these, listen, I, I, I'm telling y'all these, listen, they some goats with tennis shoes and some combat boots and a tutu on. I'm telling you, they will hit you with that thing. And when you ready, when you, you think that you're like, wow, this thing is moving too, it's moving way too fast. I saw somebody say that in the chat because see a normal relationship starts out here and it goes like this, but see when a narcissist boss, you know, it starts here and then it go just like that to the bottom. Absolutely. Because that's that's just how they do it. They gotta hit you hard so they can draw that emotion out. Because when they draw that emotion out, that's the thing that's gonna keep you hooked is that emotion. You got all of those endorphins and those chemicals running around in your brain. I know boss gonna talk about that. that and you look. so what about what about okay, let's let's go into now. Obviously, I know that everyone is not saved. I understand that and we respect that. 
And mm -hmm. I understand that not everybody, me and her, we do believe in, you know, sex. It needs, that's something reserved for marriage. Not right. everybody believes that. So some mm -hmm. people believe in testing the car, drive the car, you know, before you, you know, buy the car. So mm -hmm. understand that that's for some people. Now, some of you have had a sexual experience with this narcissist. Mm -hmm. And let's say whether it was a good experience or a bad experience. But no sooner you have this experience, they already start talking about meeting the mother, getting married, building a home. They start talking about this. And y'all just had a sexual encounter. You guys don't really know each other that well. What you right. think about that? Ooh, wait. They just had a, a, a sexual encounter and they don't even know each other that well. Hmm. See that right there. Okay, so let me let me break something down to you. Let me explain this. Because see, I, like Boss said, listen, this is what we believe. But I just want to put it to you like this. Let's take the spiritual piece out of it, okay? Let's take the spiritual piece out of it. Let's just talk. Can we talk? Can we talk? Okay, so when you when you go and do that, okay, and you test the, you know, you want to go ahead and test out that Ferrari, okay? And half the time, it wasn't even a Ferrari. It was a broke down Chevy, okay? Oh. So... You know, and that's just what it was. I mean, at the end of the day, because when you got through with that thing, you would listen, they left you shoveling one foot and laying the other, okay? A Chevy. Hello. So, Chevrolet, listen, so when you do that, what you're doing is you cannot make, you can't make a, a decision, you can't make a, 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 a decision without including your emotion in it. Because now you've taken yourself to a place where your emotion has been extracted, okay? So let's talk about the soul. Because let everybody got a soul, whether you're spiritual or not. You got a soul, okay? Your, your soul houses your mind, your will, your emotions. Once you allow somebody into what I call the proximity of intimacy, once you allow someone there, then what you have done is you have allowed a person to come into your soul. And once you do that, you are not able to make a decision that would just be purely based on, y'all ready? Logic. All logic goes out the window. That's how y'all see it. Logic is like this. Once you go, once you go and, and you entertain that bird, you put that recycled pigeon in your bed or up in the nest where you were. <laughs> oh boy. Once you get that recycled pigeon off up in that, that beat up nest they got, or you let them get off in your bed and dirty up your bed with them sticks and shrubs and things. See, you can't make a decision out of logic anymore. Now you're going to, yeah, that's right, Angela Baxter, soul tie. That's exactly what's going to happen. And you, and now you're going to be with that sexual encounter. That sexual encounter is going to cloud everything that you do. Because now you're thinking with your emotion. You're no longer thinking with your logical mind. That's it. You know, I mean, another, that's what I think. You know, oh, let me turn on the mic. Uh, you know, another thing that I was thinking is, you know, a lot of times you hear people uh, uh, it's just a booty call. I'm not going to get emotionally caught up. You know, uh, it is what it is. Is is friendship. What is it? Friends with benefits, friends with benefits. You know, the thing about friends with benefits is this women, we are the way that we are created. Now I'm not talking about a disordered woman. I'm not talking about one that is a narcissist or has problems with empathy, compassion, and attachment issues. I'm talking about a person that is healthy, whatever we, you know, whatever healthy is nowadays. Right. But right. women are chemically and naturally created to be nurturers. We're nurturers. We, we breastfeed our babies. We nurture. And sometimes as women, we nurture too much. Like if you have sons, sometimes we nurture our sons too much. So mm -hmm. if somebody come around there, you know, the men come around and rough them up. You know, as, as mothers, we like, don't hurt my baby. So we're nurturers by nature. And we, we're incubators. You know, you put a sperm in us, we're going to bring you a baby. You That's us, it. You know, you give us a house, we're going to bring you a home. You give us grocery, we're going to make a meal. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's just how we are. We're creative like that. A man, on the other hand, a man, you know, a woman will fall in love. Now, if you can fall in love, you can fall mm -hmm. out of love. You're supposed to 
grow in love. But when it comes mm-hmm. to a man, usually for a man, it takes a little longer for a man to grow in love with a woman because a man is more logical and thinking. Women are more emotional in thinking. And when and if you don't if you don't believe it, think about most of your your uh, therapists are mm-hmm. females. Because mm-hmm. most women, we we externalize. So we talk and we can solve a problem by externalizing and talking. Men internalize and so they think inside. They think, 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 think. You can ask a man a question and he may come back to you two weeks later and be like, you remember that question you asked me? You think like, I already solved the problem because a lot of men internalize. They think internally, we externalize and we're emotional thinkers when men are more logical and thinking. So when a person says, I'm not going to get caught up in this. As a woman, that's a lie. Unless you're a narcissist yourself, as a woman, that's a lie. You will get emotionally caught up no matter how much you try. And and some women, you know, no matter how much you try, if you got a whole bunch of different men, one of them men you done got caught up with. What? And you thinking about them men because that he deposited something in you. So mm-hmm. and a narcissist knows that he can deposit something in you and you'll turn it over. You'll incubate it. You'll turn it over. You'll incubate it. You'll turn it over. That's why with these narcissists and they plant these seeds in you, these seeds grow. You're growing or you are incubating thoughts that don't even belong to you. You're you're incubating fears that don't belong in you. You are incubating uh, uh, what low self-esteem. You're incubating, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff when you're talking to people, you know, people have the women have low self-esteem, low self-worth. And then now if you talk to if you talk to some of the men, a lot of the men are thinking that way because they've had mothers or they have the nurturers that imparted that in them. So what you think, Joe? Mm-hmm. That is, I mean, that's spot on. And then too, what you said is so true. And the narcissists look for people like us. They look for people like us because we are nurturers, because we will turn it over. We will turn it over. They are looking for that. And like you said, they, when listen, when you have a son, it's good to nurture them, to show them how to love how to how to be you know how to how to embrace a woman because at the end of the day we are the first women that they fall in love with however there is a place called too much nurturing because when you when you nurture them to the point of where they are now depending on you for everything now you just created a grown boy for life unless you got a man that is going to 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 balance that thing out and show him what time it is that that right there is a that's a that's a red flag i mean right there when you when you and you can i mean you can nurture women you know girls too a, a little too much and spoil them but for the men because they are supposed to be the high priest of their house they're supposed to be the decision make, make makers of their home they're supposed to hold the position of authority in the home that is a no-no for men but a lot of times narcissists and you're right the male narcissists they jump into it they don't have any emotion attached to it i don't care what you feel like you have heard from this point on i don't i don't care what you what they've told you they are not listen they are not attached to this thing they don't have any type of connection with you the only connection that they are wanting with you is a connection with your soul they want to have a relationship with your emotion period these birds only want your emotion because it's the thing that they can't they can't produce on their own they only have and boss you could testify to this or you could talk about it but the true emotions that they have are anger rage shame and then a lot of them carry envy too but other than that they pick you because you are you can bring you can make their dreams come to life because you will take that seed into your and you want to make it your own and a lot of you when you going through the whole recovery process you 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 get stuck in 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 staying with the bird okay you get stuck right there because you got pride you know what I'm saying? You are a fixer. You want to fix everything. You want to make this. You want to do a build a narc. Okay. You trying to build a man, but you building a narc. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you caught up in this thing. 
and you got the pride going on you got to let go of it because they bought you that seed because they knew that you were a thinker they knew that you were a nurturer you thought that you had a connection with them the narcissist ain't never connected with you that's why they that's why when you was with them sexually you always felt empty when you got up because that nasty pigeon didn't have i mean listen his feathers was dirty when he laid down and they was dirty when he got up okay that's what it was and you listen and that's just what they are they don't want they don't want connections. What they want is supply. They want fuel and they want you to be devastated and destroyed when they are done with you. So then that way that can leave the door open for them to come back. Am I wrong? Yeah, Talk about sorry. it, Bob. And I mean, what do they do? Let me turn my other one. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. You know, you know, you know now, now I'm echoing on your side. Well, now you got to turn your volume down. Okay, can you still, can you hear me on here? Okay, we can't hear you on here then. I can hear you. Okay, we couldn't hear you over here. Oh, okay, you couldn't hear me? Uh, on there we couldn't. Okay. Now we can. Okay. You know, the crazy thing is, I mean, I can't tell anybody how to live their life or what to do, but this, you know, this is not the seventies. This is not the eighties no more. And so, you know, at, at one time, what was it? Free sex and you can sleep where you want to. And, and nowadays, you know, and whatever floats your boat, that's your business. Mm -hmm. We ain't telling you that that's your business. They got these new relationships, this polygamous and, and we date everybody to fish, the dog, the, everybody. Do you know, just like you were saying, soul ties. And, and, you know, I can, if we step out of the spiritual part of the soul tie, mm -hmm. think about when you say soul tie, how you are in bondage with somebody else's soul. So that means you have another person like the narcissist who is impulse, superimposing mm -hmm. his will onto yours. And you're basically entangled and enmeshed in somebody else's issues. Just mm -hmm. like we were just saying, you're walking around with emotions that they projected themselves on you. They don't told you that you crazy, you desperate, you the narcissist. You know what? No wonder my little microphone ain't on. Hold on. It ain't plugged in. <laughs> there we go. But, you know, but, you, you know, you walking around and, and you are incubating or you're even men, you know, you're incubating and holding on to somebody else's projection on you. You mm -hmm. have become a screen and they are projecting themselves on you. If you listen to a narcissist and be quiet, they'll tell you how they're thinking. By everything they accuse you of, everything that they 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 say about you, everything, you know, you what what's one of the things I used to hear uh, a lot and I hear people say this a lot. Um you wouldn't have made it without me. Ooh. And you may have met him and he was homeless, but you wouldn't have made it without me. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have all this. And, mm -hmm. and you think to yourself, now I know I got a job. And some people had a job equivalent to the narcissist, you know, uh, but but nowadays, you know, people are just, they're, they're doing whatever, you know, because they're free to do whatever they want to do, but right. they have no idea how many narcissists they're coming across. And mm -hmm. then not only how many, just like you were saying, you get up and you still feel empty. So mm -hmm. every you lay down with somebody, women, men, dog, whatever, cat, cat, the narcissist, the dog is the empath. And so you lay down with something and you get up with something that wasn't even yours when you lay down in the first place. Come now, on. I wonder why you feel worse than what you felt with before. That's Come why on. even with like some of these narcissist coaches, people can listen to them. And I was listening, I was listening to this program and it was these, um, it was these two ladies that used to be psychics. <laughs> Um, that um, that uh, accepted Jesus Christ in their life. And so what they were talking about is, is you can keep going to a psychic over and over and over again, but they're only going to tell you stuff that they know that they're familiar with because evil does evil. So yeah. they're going to tell you stuff. And no matter how many times you come back to the psychic, 
you're always wanting more answers and more answers and more answers. There's never any resolve, just more answers. You want more answers. You have more questions, but there's never any resolve. So That's you just keep going back. That's the way that a narcissist is. You keep going back to this narcissist. The narcissist is an empty pit. You keep mm -hmm. going back and you going back. You want answers. 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 You keep going back and it's an empty pit. And, and just like with narcissist coaches, you keep going back, but you need more answers. I need more answers. And really what they're doing, and you don't even realize what the narcissist coach is doing, that narcissist coach is feeding you fuel. And Come it's getting on. you so hyped up to keep you coming back for more. And that's mm -hmm. how you know, and I'm not I'm not down in anybody. But if you notice, if you go look at some of the channels, you can tell men have more followers than the females do. And the females yeah. are talking about the same thing. Now you go to a narcissist's YouTube channel. If you notice, they get you hyped up. You understand what I'm talking about. You angry, mm -hmm. you mean angry. And and I got answers now. And this is, you know, but yet you keep going back and you still empty. You never yeah. get any resolve. You never get any resolve. So not just in a relationship with a narcissist, but even like coaching with a mm -hmm. narcissist or even a friend that's a narcissist, you always empty, always empty. Like that's you say, true. you lay down and you get up empty. You you connect and you leave empty. No matter what you do, you always empty because they're empty. Yeah. How can how can how can I? Me and Telsha met that part. You know me me and Telsha met. Matter of fact. Telsha was my moderator, and I didn't even know who Telsha was. Telsha was my moderator. One day, I happened to be having a conversation with Tasha, uh, uh, and Tasha was like, um, "She said I had seen your video before. I didn't know you would. I didn't. I didn't put two and two together." So Tasha sent me a video, and she said, "This is Telsha." I said, "That's Telsha." I said, "Telsha, my moderator." I didn't even know Telsha was doing videos. Then, <laughs> then we started talking on. Um, on Apostles Clubhouse, and then mm -hmm. me, you, and Marcus, all of us, she put us all together on a platform, and when we met each other, it was a feeling of safety. Yes. I wasn't threatened, she wasn't threatened, we didn't feel unsafe, it didn't feel like she was trying to get something, it was just, it was just a knowing. Did mm -hmm. you know or just know that this That's person it. is safe to talk to? It. And we do the same thing all the time. So there was just a safe feeling. With a narcissist, it don't matter, the feelings is not safe. It's, it's an overwhelming emotion. You are overwhelming. I didn't have an overwhelming emotion with Telsha. I had a kindred spirit with her. I met her and she was so sweet and she laughed. Now you, you laugh at my jokes. We cool, you know, but she <laughs> laughed because like the rest of us. Not like she just has that kindred spirit. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, it's not a kindred <laughs> spirit. You're trying to find a plug for a hole. And yeah. so they become a plug for a hole but you never, you never super comfortable. Like you said, you can meet them and, 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 and right. You still got red flags when you meet them. You knew it all along. It was, it's not hindsight. It's 2020. And you right. know, later on, you look back and like the red flags were there all along. I felt that I knew something wasn't right. I've even had people say, as a matter of fact, I hate to say it, but the night I got married, I knew I made a mistake. Woo! I didn't hear that bird. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> all, the way, all the way up to the marriage, I knew I was making a mistake, but I was still, no, you know, I ain't never felt like this before. He gonna, he gonna make a home and, and see a narcissist deals with your, your, uh, your cravings. You mm -hmm. want a home. You know, I want a husband. I want to make a family. And he sold that lie. You know, they sold, they, they sell that lie. And, and I knew it was wrong all the way up until the wedding. And when we got married, I knew I had made a mistake. I said it when I said I do. I said, I done made the biggest mistake in my life. And then what do you do? Try to put it in the back of your mind. Like, I'm, a, I'm going to make this work. That. that. I'm going to make this work. There go your red flags. That's it. There you, there you red flags. I'm telling you. What what, what other red flags you want to talk about, tell me. It, it's it's the truth. Well, see, my in my situation too, you know, when 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 you start looking at what what actually happened, like I knew that see, I'm gonna tell you something. This what this is what y'all don't that y'all need to understand about red flags. Before you met the narcissist that you became involved with in a relationship, you met one in your family first. There was a that it was one in the family first. I don't care. I listen. Ninety nine percent of the time, I can promise you, you had one in your family. 
the reason you knew something was wrong with the narcissist is because you was attracted to the narcissist because there was a familiarity with that spirit see y'all we see we are we are we are souls right we carry a spirit but there was something familiar about that narcissist that just really drew you to the narcissist right i mean they were talking to because see what they do is they talk to your inner child that's why they hit you with that emotion See, that emotion is meant to bring the guard down, like boss was talking about. They, they, they lower your guard, right? So they hit you with that emotion, hard and heavy. And so when they hit you with that emotion, then what it does is it starts to activate that inner child and the little girl comes out or the little boy comes out and you're like, <laughs> you're so, <laughs> and that bird is over there licking his chops okay that chinese crested is over there crossing his legs with them combat boots on and he is ready okay he about ready to come on in so you 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 looking at all of this and you're like oh this is so good this is my soulmate well uh, excuse me what do you mean by soulmate because your soul houses i'm just talking now it houses your mind your will and e your emotions i want y'all to really think about this okay no yep your yep. soulmate so this your soulmate because he have your same mind he has your same will and he has your same emotion i just want that to marinate for a minute yep because really when he's mirroring you he's actually showing you that he has your same mind your will your emotion Yep. This Chinese crested is straight coming for your emotion. I'm telling you, I tell y'all, listen, especially on my channel, I said, listen, y'all can look at that Michelin man with a wig on if you want to and think that they are Lola Falana. Okay, but I'm going to tell you right now. Once they hit you with that, once they, they love bomb that inner child. See, you think that they love bombing you, but they're not love bombing you because, see, you are already broken. You broken when you when you you know when you get into it with them. Y'all, yeah, I mean, I'm, come on, come on, let's be real. Cause broken people are going to attract broken people, right? Because I I said it before. No person that's whole that's living their life doing what they supposed to be doing, and and I mean they have taken the time to do the work. They're not gonna deal with a broken person. Broken people are typically going to attract broken people. So they already know you broken. Cause see when they hit you with that empathy test when y'all first got involved, when they hit you with that story that just dropped your jaw beyond hell. I mean it was just that low. Your your jaw went all the way down there. And you were just sitting there, ah! yeah, that right there, that told them where to go with you. Right. They hit you with that test. And so that's, that's what y'all got to understand is that when they telling you that they are your soulmate, you got to think, wait, my soul houses my mind, my will, and my emotions. Um, how are you knowing my mind? How are you knowing my will? And how are you knowing my emotions? Is that not something to talk about, boss? Is that not something to marinate on? Yes. Yes. Seriously. I mean, I'm just saying. Because when you start thinking about a soulmate, then when you start thinking about it in that context, you're going to really back up and say, hold up. That's something for y'all to take with you. That's a good nugget right there. Do you use a hold up, swole up. Yeah, he my mind, will, and my emotions. You doing the same thing? That right there is going to let you know when they tell you soulmate from now on, you're going to be like, you see what I'm saying? Because you're going to start thinking about the mind, the will, and the emotions. Nah, you're going to be back and I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> but, how, how do you, but how do you even know that I'm your soulmate and you right. only call me for 30 days? You you know, even, even with friendships, you know, we could be soulmates as friends. But it's mm -hmm. gonna take a long time to determine. You know what? We soulmates as friends, right? You know, and and there are some good soul ties. You know, there are some good soul ties. But how in the world does a person come up and they don't even know you and say that you're my soulmate? What they tell you is is that I'm fit to change your soul to make it match mine. That part. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna match you. I'm gonna match you and be your soulmate. 
Yeah. So you're just gonna line up because I'm gonna find out what you're thinking and everything, and then I'm just gonna mirror you in the first place. That's not a soulmate. That's a that's a tie from hell. <laughs> and, then, and look, and then on top of that, and that's a disaster waiting to happen. Now, yeah, it is. you know, think about this for like you were just saying nine times out of 10, you came out of a household with a narcissist. Most people that get in, into situationships have come out of a household with a narcissist. And a lot of you are searching for what you did not get at home. If mm -hmm. your father was an absent father, if your father was abusive, if your father was negligent, if your father was, you know, uh, neglect, uh, uh, um, what's the other one? Neglect, uh, um, oh, come on, rejection, mm -hmm. abandonment, and even a mother. If a mother is neglectful, uh, uh, abandoned you, reject, rejected, rejected you, or competed with you, you are constantly on a hunt for that void in your soul. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, the way you're magnetized to, to a narcissist is the fact that they're going to throw out bait to see if you, if you, you know, and most narcissists think about it when you're dealing with like men, for example, you mm -hmm. can take, just, just say a, a normal man that does not have narcissism. Mm -hmm. I know they know how to play the game. They know how to play the game when it comes to women. I've, I've had big brothers that I grew up with, you know, when I was in high school, and I used to watch them play the game. They were not narcissists, but I used to watch them play the game. So mm -hmm. they're like, you know, women think like this, and this is what women do. Watch me do this. I used to listen to them on the telephone, and they used to play the game. And they weren't narcissists. They were just immature, and they were just little players, they, you know, high school, in high school. Now, take take that and, and times that, multiply that by a 1,000 with a person with a disorder. So they're still human, they still know the game, they just mm -hmm. intensify it to the point where they're gonna pull you in. And a man knows how to find those sensitive, everybody has vulnerable spots, men yes, and females, everybody. female alike. That's why when you go into a relationship, a relationship is a vulnerable place to be. That's mm -hmm. why most people are not ready to go in a relationship because we're not ready to be vulnerable to anyone yet. Because you're still in the process of healing. But when you are when you get into a situation, nine times out of ten, if you have not healed, you are trying to fill a void there that you go. Is not rectified in childhood or growing mm -hmm. up. You are still a lot of women have married their their mothers and their husbands. Their mm -hmm. husband actually was exactly what their mothers were. And a lot of men have married their fathers in their wives, you know, and some of them have married their mothers, you know, and some of them have married their fathers. And and, and if you look back at it, you'd be like, oh, my gosh, he was just like my dad. He did this, mm -hmm. this, 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 because you were looking for you were looking to fill a void. Then when you're in the situation with the person, you're constantly trying to prove yourself to your mother or your father in a relationship with a narcissist exactly you're constantly trying to prove your worth because with a narcissist you're constantly trying to prove your worth with mm -hmm. your mother and father you were constantly trying to prove your worth so now you with this narcissist so you constantly trying to prove your worth with this narcissist you're mm -hmm. looking for something that a human being cannot give you right that part oh. you're looking for something you're looking for something that a person cannot give you if you're gonna marry somebody it takes it ta you know i hate when people say and this is what apostle said too you know this is my better half. Mm -hmm. like said, I'm not a half a woman. Right. I'm not a half a woman. So it takes a whole woman and a whole man to make a whole relationship, to make a whole child, to make a whole family. Mm -hmm. I don't, like you said, I don't want no building arc. I don't, mm -hmm. want, I don't want no half a man. You got to be, especially our age. Exactly. You know, so I ain't got time to build an arc, you know. So you can't come half and half. It just don't work for me. You know, and I'm quite sure uh, everything that you done been through, I ain't got time to, to, hey, this don't come with instruction to assemble. You got to be already assembled. <laughs> and narcissists, are, are narcissists, listen, narcissists are pieces and parts of everybody. Pieces and parts, piece, narcissists are pieces and parts of supply that they have gotten over the years. They yeah. are not one individual person. They don't even know themselves. You know, they are pieces of a parts of everybody they have learned. Mm -hmm. got time, like what the lady say, ain't got time for that. Nobody got time for that. The sweet brown, yeah. Well, ain't nobody got time. <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. We too old for that. We done did that already. Did that, done that, wearing a t-shirt. 
Yeah, it's fragments. That's that's what it is. You know, they are fragmented individuals. And see, you know, I said that on one of my, I, I posted it up and I said something about fragments. And I said, oh, I said, is a uh, person worth, worth your, I was talking about peace. You know, basically a fragmented individual, they will snatch your peace away from you. And that's just what they are. Because and you said it just right. It takes two whole people to have one whole relationship, okay? If you got a person with fragments, and I, I put up a post, I said, no more fragments, okay? It takes two whole people to make one whole relationship. And see, narcissists are never going to be whole people. Like Boss said, listen, you said it perfectly. It is, you are, they are fragmented people. This is what they are going to give you. They have uh, make made a decision to divorce the true self. They don't want nothing to do with the true self. They want the false self. The false self cannot connect with their soul because it's it's an ego trip. See, it's an ego trip. So they don't even have a connection with it. It's just a persona that they wake up and decide to go with every day. So that's why you don't feel a connection with them because they're not connected to themselves. So when you got a person that's not connected with themselves, then what you going to do with that? You know what I'm saying? How you going to connect? That's a fragmented individual. That's somebody that is never going to be able to give you what you want, what you need, and they're never going to be able to fulfill that space. And anyway, like, like, like he said, boss, I mean, Here's the thing. You're looking for something that man can't give you. You're right. looking for something that you need to solidify within yourself between you and the universe. If that's what you worship or you and the, and the creator, if that's what you worship. I mean, I'm just saying it's it, here. Here's the thing. I'm a believer. So for me, it's a spiritual thing. Because, see, once you get connected, a lot of times the reason people get so connected and caught up with these narcissists is because they don't want to do the work on themselves. You've been broken by the people that raised you. You've been around people that were toxic all your life. And now it just feels right to have another person that you're going to have to help and that you are going to have to uh, show how to uh do things or you just gonna have to help them because you've helped all your life but see when you get into a relationship to have a fulfilling relationship with someone it should be a person that can meet you y'all should be able to meet each other right here you know y'all should be uh, y'all should be on the same wavelength okay and what that takes is you gotta have a vertical relationship with whatever y'all worshiping and then that's gonna make the horizontal right but see, if, with a narcissist, it's always like this. It's never like this. It's always like this. So if you think that you're going to get into a, a, an addiction ship or a situation ship with a fragmented individual and somehow try to change that individual over, what you're doing is, I'm going to tell you what you're doing. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Because I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to get real, real with y'all. Like I do on my live streams. What you doing is you trying to play God in a satanic situation. I'm just saying. That's what you doing. Because see the situation, if, you, if, you marry, if you're doing it outside of marriage, then that's, the, that's, a, that's a real bad situation. So you trying to play God in this situation and it's never going to work. The narcissist is never going to love you because they don't love themselves. I don't care how much they tell you they love you. They can't love you. They're fragmented individuals. They're broken and they're going to break you more. Okay. That's mm -hmm. their job is to break you more and to break you to a place where you're not going to be able to, to see your way out of that situation. So you'll be caught up in a cycle with them forever. And they will take you through decades and decades of just wasting your life with a bird, with a whole rhino with a bow. And you done wasted 20 years with that thing. I'm telling you. It's crazy. Absolutely. You know what? I'm going to comment. I'm going to comment on something that somebody, a comment here and a question over here. The comment over here, uh, one mm -hmm. of the ladies said that the only person that can change a person is God. Actually, yeah. God can change a person that wants to change. Wow. Change. That's just like, that's just like drug and alcohol. 
if a person mm -hmm. is addicted to drugs and alcohol, it doesn't matter what you say or what you do. It doesn't matter how much you pray for them. They mm -hmm. have to make up in their mind. And I'm not saying don't pray for them. I'm just saying they themselves have to make up in their mind that they want to change. Mm -hmm. and so the person actually has to say, you know what? I have a problem and I need to go seek help. <laughs> Likewise with a narcissist. Don't ever let somebody tell you that it's impossible for a narcissist to change. A mm -hmm. narcissist can change if they desire to change. They have to put in the work, but they have to first say that something is wrong with them. What narcissist do you know is going to admit to you, I have a problem. There's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Even the narcissists that you hear talking in, in general uh, on, on YouTube channels and all that, they ain't never just sat there and told you, I know something is wrong with me. I mm -hmm. know that I'm like this. I know that I'm a jacked up individual. I know they'll tell you all the stuff that they do and how they do it, but you never right. hear them say it in a remorseful way. That's yes. so, yes, God can change a person, but a person has to be willing to be changed. You That's have to it. be willing to change and you have to be willing to listen to someone. Uh, and one thing that a narcissist can't handle, they can't handle constructive criticism about, mm -hmm. their, about, about their behavior, their poor behaviors. Ooh, and that's see, the truth. Over here on this side, somebody asked, why are they so fragmented? You, want to start first, you start first and then I, then I give them the clinical side. Ooh. Well, you know, they, let me say this. I want to comment on what you said about the, um, you know, about them changing. And then I want to get into that. I want to say this because, I, you know, I'm going to just be me. I'm going to tell you like I tell my people at the T on MPD and relationships. Listen, narcissist boss gives us the clinical side, but I'm going to tell you what the real real is. You dealing with a reprobate okay a reprobate person let me just tell you if you don't know what a reprobate is it's a person that basically god doesn't speak to anymore okay he done tried to contact them tried to you know tried to really get them to listen but you're dealing with a person that now has turned their wheel over they don't want to hear nothing they are in a rebellious state and this is just where they are okay so here's my thing because i get asked this question all the time well why don't don't we shouldn't we pray for the narcissist well let me just say this i'm gonna say this if if i know that i'm dealing with a whole reprobate okay listen this is what i'm doing i'm following god god doesn't walked away why are you still there why are you still there i'm just saying that's gonna set some folks free off up in here somebody gonna get free off of that if God don't walk away from them, why are you still there? So then we're talking about, you know, I, I'm just saying, maybe you want to just entertain that. Think about it. If God said, listen, I throw up my hand, you, I, I'm going to let you have your own. Because, you know, God said in the last day, he'll be, you know, they'll be turned over to strong delusions. So if you, I'm just saying for me, this is T on MPD talking. This is tells you, y'all, listen, if God don't walk away, why are you still there? God said, listen, I'm, I'm done with that. But why are they so fragmented? They are fragmented because when they when they were growing up, I mean, the, the, the spiritual side of that is that they have chosen a false self. They chose to get they chose to suppress the, the true self and they chose to engage with the false self. They call it my narcissism. That's what they call it. Oh, you mean your demon? Okay, whatever. All right, so anyway, here we go. And I know some people don't like to hear that, but I'm a spiritual person. On my channel, I talk about the spiritual side of it. So let me just say this. When you have a person that refuses to face their problems, they refuse to take constructive criticism. They refuse to allow someone to come into that space of intimacy. A narcissist is not going to let you into their space of intimacy. What you're going to get from that is you're going to get a fragmented individual because they think they know everything and they don't know anything. They don't know anything about having true relationships and connections with others. They don't know anything about that because all they know is faking it till they making it and then that's it. And then when, when, the, when the mask fall off, they got to go find somebody else, create a new mask. I mean, you that's got to be the craziest way to live ever. It's uh, the T on MPD and relationships, Melissa Ray. I saw your uh, question go up, but that's that's my that's my uh, take on that, boss. Yes, on the oh, I got to turn the mic back on. 
Now, okay. on the clinical side of the house, the answer to that question, why are they so fragmented? So, you know, you still have, you have, I'm a mental health, um, I am a mental health counselor. So I'm a therapist. Um, and I'm also, my doctor is in um, a doctor of psychology and counseling psychology. So uh, the educational part of the uh, educating counselors, supervision. So you have researchers, psychiatrists, psychologists that are still researching this particular personality disorder. Mm -hmm. You have to remember that the mind is very fragile. Mm -hmm. Let me turn down the volume. Um, the the brain, the, the mind, the brain is very, very fragile. And growing up, you have to remember that children go through developmental stages. And mm -hmm. based on theory, on psychological theory, a child has to process through different stages in their life. Anytime a particular stage is disrupted by trauma, by uh, any kind of trauma, you know, and most of us, because we're older, we don't think something may be traumatic to a child. You don't know what is traumatic to a child because they're so little, they don't have coping skills like adults do. So mm -hmm. it could be something as simple as the father or the mother being deployed um, overseas. You know, all of a sudden they have this feeling of abandonment. You know, um, it could be a situation where uh, both parents deployed. And so the child feels abandoned. They feel like an orphan, you know, or rejected, neglected. Then you have dysfunctional parents uh, that, you know, and sometimes the parents may not be... Um, Tell you do me a favor. Click your um your microphone on there. On the clubhouse. Click your microphone on the clubhouse. Okay. Because it's like beeping feedback. Okay. But turn that microphone back on. There we go. But when you talk, make sure you turn the other one on. Okay. I okay. I'll do that. Thank you. I have to turn it off so it doesn't echo in yours. Okay. So, but. You know, so we don't know, you know, because a child does not have the coping skills that an adult has. And, you know, they're so fragile that in different if you go look at the look at the different stages. Some of you guys are in psychology. Look at the different stages of development. You, you have two, you have different theorists that that talk about the stages of development. You have that uh, or, you know, like Freud, he talks about the oil fixation, you know, when the babies are sucking, you mm -hmm. know, you have, uh, the object rel relativity. I think that is where, you know, the baby, when you look at the baby, the baby don't know that when you walk behind the wall that you're going to come back. You know, mm -hmm. you have to remember that a child depends on whoever that the person is that's in their life is the nurturer. They're totally dependent on this individual and mm -hmm. any type of disruption in those developmental stages can be traumatic to a child. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was listening to someone, um, they were telling me that uh, there's this little bitty child um, that whenever a phone rang, the child would just have a panic attack and cry and scream and cry and scream. And they couldn't figure out what is going on with this little kid. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening was, is they took the child to therapy. They were trying to figure out, but every time the phone rings, this baby would just scream and cry. Come to find out the baby was sitting in church and they were at a funeral. So I guess a family member, I don't know who the family member was. It wasn't her family member, but if somebody had died and the pastor said, they were called on to be with the Lord. Called. To oh, be with the Lord. wow. God had called them back home. So every time the phone rang, the baby associated a call with dying. So wow. whenever the phone rang, she didn't want the parents to answer the phone. You know, she, anytime the phone rang, she thought that if you answered the telephone, you're going to die. And so they had to teach, but do you see something that simple traumatizes a child? Now, for some people, they may not develop narcissistic personality. And then you have narcissists that um that that in that they treat their children like little princesses. I mean, you see that on in Hollywood all the time. Mm -hmm. they, they do no wrong. Mom and daddy give you everything. Don't make you work for nothing. You ain't got to be responsible for nothing. People are at your beck and call. They they train them to be narcissists and mm -hmm. not that's why when I did the um, when I did the conference, I was talking about the different um, parenting styles and mm -hmm. you can see your attachment styles and you can see where and I'm going to do that again on a webinar. But you see the different attachment styles coming from the different parenting styles and you can see what narcissism develops. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's male, well-meaning parents 
that actually create narcissists because they're so in fear that the child may become a narcissist, so in fear trying to overprotect the child that you actually overdo it and can develop. You see how fragile that is. Yeah. And so a narcissist, what happens is, is instead of them growing out, it's like a autoimmune disorder where they they invert in to protect themselves. So everybody is dangerous and they have to do whatever they need to do to protect themselves. Meaning that if I want something from you, I will get it whatever way I can. I feel I feel empowered because my self-esteem is low. I feel empowered where I can make you react to what I do. And it makes me feel more powerful doing that. So mm -hmm. not everybody develops narcissistic personality disorder some people <laughs> actually develop um dissociative disorder so multiple personalities remember the movie sybil or if you if some of you guys go get that book it's called when rabbit howls or um there's another one i can't think of the name of the book but some people they're so traumatized and everybody dissociates but most mm -hmm. people don't have the disorder. Remember when you're driving down the road and your mind is on something, you think about something thinking and you kind of on autopilot and you end up at home, but you can't recall the ride. Right. That's a mild form of dissociation. But <laughs> when a person is traumatized and they dissociate, they dissociate to somewhere safe in their head. And eventually mm -hmm. they, their mind starts fragment fragmenting and start breaking off into fragments where now they have a disorder where they, they start losing time. So everybody doesn't develop narcissistic personality disorder, but to answer that question, why are they so fragmented? Because they have been traumatized somewhere mm -hmm. in the developmental stages, they have been traumatized. And even if it's a well-meaning parent and the parent didn't abuse them, there is still something in the stages of development that has been disrupted to cause them to fragment. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that helped. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all wanted to ask some questions. Y'all go ahead. Y'all can ask some questions. You can ask some questions. Let me look. <laughs> okay, I had a question here. Hey, Miss Ernestine and Solomon. Hold on, let me bring her up to the stage. Hey there, Ernestine. Hello. Hold on, let me turn your volume up. There she is. How you doing? We're doing excellent. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I just want to say you guys are doing a good job on this platform, both of you. Thank you. We appreciate you. That's some good information from both of you guys. Thank you, sis. Thank oh, you. <laughs> Anybody else want to ask some questions? Talk to us before we get off. We got a few minutes till we go into sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, Tina said she was born of a narcissist. I think a lot of us were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of us were. Let's see. If you see a question, let me know if I miss it, because I have all the channels in one on, the, on here. I see. Uh, let me let me look back at. Uh, let me go back to my YouTube and look at the. I I think I'm seeing everything here. Let's see. We have. Um, let's see. What is Dinah saying? Somebody asked, do people with NPD usually like to be hugged? Um, they'll hug you, whatever they whatever they have to do. Yeah, they'll be affectionate with you in order to get what they want. But if you notice, the more you pay attention to a narcissist, they're like androids. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, um, I was asking somebody one time, um, uh, they grew up with a narcissistic mother and they can never recall ever being hugged by their mother. And so they said that when they got a little older, they hugged their mother for the first time and they were kind of surprised because they didn't know what she felt like. Mm -hmm. You know, most, you know, your daughter hugs you, my daughter hugs. So mm -hmm. even my, my kids are like, they, they know my smell. They know, you know, the kids know your smell. They know the type of perfumes you like. So mm -hmm. they know perfume. They know like the type of perfume you wear. They know mm -hmm. what you feel like. So they know if you soft, you, you, you know, some of y'all bodybuilders, y'all got muscles too. So, you know, they, they know what you feel like. But she was saying that when she hugged her mother, it was an unfamiliar feeling to her because mm -hmm. she did not know what her mother felt like. And when she hugged her, it was like hugging an android. It was mm -hmm. like it was emotions. There was no comfort. There was no comfort to it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I was asking my kids the same question. I was like, let me ask you a question. When you hug me, you know, what does it feel like? And my daughter said, um, she says, I mean, I know that my issues are there or I may have certain problems. Or I'm going through something at the time. But when you hug me, it feels like everything's going to be all right. 
You know, mm -hmm. everything's going to be all right. I'm with mama. I'm safe. You know, so imagine a, a child that it grows up as an adult and doesn't know what that feels like. So mm -hmm. a narcissist will hug you, but I guarantee you there's nothing you're going to get out of that hug. Now, you may be all enmeshed in that hug and you think it's wonderful and your heart beating. This is so great. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you know, as those uh, feelings die down. You know, once those little hype, those feelings die down, you'll start thinking about the fact like, dang, I hugged them, but there was no, there was no, there was like no compassion or there was no like, there was no connection there. So yeah, mm -hmm. narcissists will hug, especially if that's something that you want and they want to punish you with it and then they unhug you. Oh, here's a question right here. It says, how does a, that's, that was good boss. Cause that's the truth. They don't, they, even though they hug you, they still don't connect with you. They still don't. They still don't. So if that if you if that's what you're looking for as a connection, you'll never get that. Um, meaning, okay. So um, says how does a person stop ruminating while recovering from narc abuse? Oh, um, go ahead. Whew, the rumination is uh, it's it's gonna come automatic, and especially if it's a um, if it's a romantic situation. You know, you slept with them, and so you know you got that you got that that soul tie right there. So that's gonna be really hard. But the best way to get rid of rumination is you gotta you gotta do your research and find out what it really is. Now, see, this is what I teach: is that this is the number one thing that keeps people stuck in rumination is that you don't eulogize the lie let me go wait a minute let me turn my mic on here on clubhouse hold on <clears throat> did you hear what i said the bet the thing that doesn't the thing that keeps a lot of you stuck in rumination is that you don't eulogize the lie what does that mean you don't eulogize the lie that the narcissist told you Okay, when that love bombing was happening and you were thinking about this house that y'all are going to have with the picket fence and the dog and, the, you know, y'all got the two and a half kids, you know, because the dog is the half of one and y'all just y'all going to plan on vacations and everything like that. See, you don't let go of the lie. You don't let go of the person that they showed you during the love bomb. Okay, so. That's a lot of times what keeps that rumination going and going and going is because you really think that it was a person that really loved and cared about you. But if you think if you would just if you would just change your perception, change your mindset about what you were actually dealing with and say that, listen, this person never meant to give me the house. This person never get meant to love me. This I don't care if you had kids with that bird. That recycled pigeon was not listen. They was hopping on one leg and lying about the other leg being folded back. Do you hear me? <laughs> ah, that bird. Let me tell you, they didn't mean to give you anything. What they told you they were gonna give you. If you eulogize the lie, it's not just enough to to go no contact to do any of that you have to eulogize the lie that they sold you and that they told you once you eulogize that lie i'm telling you it will click in your mind the rumination will go to almost zero i'm telling you it's been tested tried and true with my clients i tell them listen you gotta go through the process and give that lie a funeral you gotta go through the and and it took them a minute to, to go ahead and go through it, I said, look, and plan the eulogy. You can, you can put a song at the top of the program. Yep, yep. Yeah. Go through the whole funeral process. Yep. And I'm telling you, it will totally, it will almost, I'm talking about 98% of get rid of that rumination. Because now you dealing with facts. You dealing with what it was. You're dealing with what it's not. You're not going over with the fantasy in your mind anymore. You're done with the fantasy. Now you're dealing with what it is. What it is and what it was, was a lie from the start. And once you do that, I'm telling you, boss, I'm, I'm just saying what you got to say. I'm just saying. So, so hold on, I got to turn my mic back on. Turn my volume down. 
So when it comes to getting over rumination, mm-hmm. you you keep that's just like meditating on something. Mm-hmm. Meditating on something. You're meditating on the shoulda, coulda, woulda, woulda if, woulda, woulda. You have to think on purpose. So you have to literally find something else to think about. And mm-hmm. that takes time and that takes work because most people, and, I, and I, I'm going to tie this into another question that somebody asked um, about how they're grieving right now and how long is the trauma bond. So I'm going to do that with the rumination. Rumination come with the grieving part. Mm-hmm. You come mm-hmm. out of this type of situation, you're going through grief and loss. You know, right. most people assume that grief and loss is only when somebody dies. Grief and loss can be when your children leave home, when you when you lose a job, when you retire from a job, when a relationship breaks up. And most people, this is not even a relationship. It's not even a real relationship. And this is not even a real person, you know, um, and this is a traumatic experience. This is a type of relationship situation sip that you will never have or never have had. This is some of the worst abuse that you can ever go through you know, psychologically uh, is is with a narcissist. And most people really don't understand that you're not dealing with a normal person. Um, and when you're ruminating, you mm-hmm. are still, you keep turning it over in your head, turning it over in your head. You have to purposely find things to, to distract yourself, meaning go buy a book dealing with, uh, you know, you got books dealing with, uh, I mean, I mean, like, I don't, I don't know, like some book. I mean, for me, like a lot of the books that I make, thank you, Telsha. But, you know, a lot of the books that I read, you know, uh, and, and for some of you, you guys have to find what works for you. I read books like by uh, Bishop T.D. Jenks. That was like mm-hmm. um, Woman Thou Art Loose. I read books by my sister, uh, um, uh, Kathy Gibson. Uh, my Life is Intentional. Mm-hmm. She's not a about you know about being being a woman she talks about being a woman knowing who you are you got to find books that speak to you you know the way you can stop ruminating is to go find books what you know you can watch videos and watch book i mean watch books and listen to books or read is you know when you listen to books your mind is still open to ruminating when you read books you are preoccupying a different part of your brain that's causing you to think and you have to find books that will start feeding you and feeding your self-esteem it mm-hmm. takes more like like Telsha was just saying it's a process mm-hmm. people want to run through a process how you know how if me and you talking I'm like sis you know what I wouldn't mind having a baby and all of a sudden you pregnant and then you go to the doctor and you waiting to go in there you know to tell they oh you about six weeks pregnant and and you do next week that don't make any sense <laughs> the baby don't even have time to develop you know, you just have a baby and all of a sudden you pregnant and you six weeks pregnant, the baby due next week. I don't feel like going through the whole process. But then you know what you having. Because you want a baby. You <laughs> King movie right there, ain't it? You know, <laughs> the same one it. But you know, but a lot of people, you don't want to go through the, the process. The place where a lot of us are at was a process to get here. You did not see us during the time we were rolling in the mud and we had black eyeliner under our eyes. And, mm-hmm. you know, I did, a, I did a little short video. Um, you know, uh, it was a short video where it actually, when I was taught, I don't know if you saw it was a short little video where it showed me through the different stages of, of, you know, childhood and, 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 you know, the abuse when I was abused, what I looked like when I was being abused. And then my recovery process, where you see me right in the church with a possible hand right on my forehead, you know, and I, and I, it was a process. You know, it was, yeah, believe it or not, six, seven years of a process that had got me to a certain point. So most people want to rush through the process. It's a process. Mm-hmm. You don't know. And then on top of that, you know, just like many of you, you know, you have a child by a narcissist. Mm-hmm. Right? Me? I have a child by I a narcissist, right? My no, my ex, my ex husband, my child's father is married to a female narcissist, so that's how I'm dealing with a narc like that. Okay, so I I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Uh Yeah, yeah. So in in essence, I am dealing with a narcissist on the other side, but I'm not because now you know that you know what they decided. So I was just saying, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Yours married a narcissist. Yes. 
person and mm -hmm. then have no choice because he's got to be involved with the kid. Right. Like, I was married to a narcissist, so mm -hmm. I have no choice because the courts say that I have to, you know, so I have to use wisdom. So mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't know once we turn the cameras off what we got to deal with once we turn the cameras off. That's and right. So, you know, and I know for a fact, Chelsea is not a hypocrite. I know I'm not a That's hypocrite. Right. He's with me in person, and mm -hmm. we have personal conversations. So Amen. we know each other's story personally. And so, and, and neither one, I know for a fact, neither one of us are hypocrites. So the same thing that we tell you guys are the same things that we have to do. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, when they're still involved in the children's life, you know, then you have to be wise to know how to handle them in order to protect your kids. That's and right. what to say to your children as you, because remember, you know, one parent is a narcissist. And I think that was another question was how do you handle it when, um, when you have a child, uh, well, first, let me just close this question. The question was how to stop the ruminating and then you're hurting really bad. When does the trauma bond stop? The, mm -hmm. Each one of them requires you, hold on a minute. So each one of you requires, each one of those requires you, number one, get into counseling. And mm -hmm. number two, you have to distract your mind by introducing something else to your mind. Because That's as soon as you keep ruminating and thinking over and over and over again, you <laughs> need to go to a bookstore and you need to find books that, that will speak to your soul, your mind, you That's as it. a woman, you as a man, you know, men are writing books too, you know, and you find a book that starts speaking opposite than what that narcissist was speaking to you. You find people that will speak into your life that speaks opposite than what the narcissist told you, you ain't about nothing. And mm -hmm. we tell you, you have no idea. You are your greatest asset. And the reason why the narcissist says that kind of stuff to you is because of the fact he knows or she knows that you are your greatest asset. And if you ever discover who you are, you can cause a serious narcissistic injury just by not being afraid. And I just did a video. Yeah. About it was a, it was actually a, a, a speaking. I didn't want to come on camera, y'all, because I was jacked up, my, uh, you know. Saturday, I was off in pajamas, so y'all weren't going to see me, but I, I want to put that out there. One of the biggest things is overcoming the fear. What are you afraid of? You're afraid of rejection. You're afraid of abandonment. And he used or she used all of that as a weapon against you. So mm -hmm. ruminate, you got, the, you got to occupy your mind with something other than those thoughts. And it takes a minute. It takes a process. You know, and even with the trauma bonding, trauma bonding, it can think about it. You are held hostage in your head. Yeah. You are held hostage in your head. They're not even holding you hostage anymore. They may have found a new supply. They ain't even they ain't even bothering you. You are still reminiscing off of the, the seeds that they planted, the narcissistic fleas, like um, Apostle Helen Sadler says, you know, in your mind, they, they, they run around in your head and you are traumatically bonded to them. So you have not broken the addiction. You haven't broken the bond. That's why I'm doing this webinar. Uh, Tell should be there uh, for the webinar. I'll be doing the webinar on, on a Thursday and Friday. It's the same webinar. You just have a choice to do it on Thursday or on Friday. And one of the things that I'm dealing with, I'm going through a process of breaking the trauma bonds and you can't do it all in one hour. It doesn't work that way. It takes yeah. time for you to be trauma bonded to the person. So it's going to take time for us to unwind you out of that trauma bond. And so that's why I am doing the, um, I'm doing the webinars and, um, um, uh, I don't know if Arlene is still here. Just be real. Can you please put the link where people can purchase a ticket so you can register? I need you guys to register because some of y'all hurt. I need you to register. And it's all one word. It's overcoming narcissist abuse. Mm -hmm. Ticketleap.com. I'm going to type it in here first and then y'all can take it from here. Overcoming narcissist abuse. Dot Ticket leap, ticket, ticky leap, ticket leap dot com. And this is for the webinar. Um, oh, Lord, did I do it right? Okay, I did. But if you go to overcoming narcissist abuse dot ticket leap dot com, I want you guys to register. It's a it's a, a webinar that I'm doing, it's a teaching I'm doing on um, 
uh, Thursday and Friday. It's the same one. You just pick and choose which one you want to attend. And if you, when I do the webinar, I'm really, I can't really open it up for questions because I'm actually recording it to put it on my website. And so I won't be able to open that up for questions. So if you pay for the webinar, you're getting the teaching now. And that's $54.99. If you want to join for the coaching the group coaching right afterward with the question and answers on how to apply this. Um, and it'll be two hours. That's two hours on the first one. The webinar is an hour. The other one's going to be an hour. But if you want to combine those, I let you have that for $99.99. But you go over to overcomingnarcissabuse.ticketleap.com and go ahead and register uh, so I can send you guys all the links this week. Okay. Um, I think the other question, hold on. The other question was... Oh, this was the other question, Telsha. Uh -huh. And let me look and see if I got any hands raised. Uh-oh. Miss Corrine, where'd you go? Miss Vanessa. Okay, Miss Vanessa left. Okay. Um, so the the other question was, and I kind of I'm gonna summarize it. Um, when is it? Is this Thursday and Friday uh, at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time? Um let me look. Okay, she's gone. She's gone. She had a question. Um, the other question was this, Telsha, and um, <clears throat> and and after that, I'll take we'll take one more question so we can get off. Um, the other question was um, she said that she has children with a narcissist, and I think the narcissist guilt trips the children into spending time with him, and she wanted to know what can she do or what can she say. Um, to help them, I think, say no, or they don't want to, you know, whatever, uh, without him um, exploding, without him, you know, blowing up. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, you know what? That That's hard. That's, um, how old are the kids? Did she say how old the kids were? Uh, let me see who asked the question. Is that Miss Angel? You're the one who asked the question, right? How old are your children? Okay, I think the feed, you take a minute to feed. Okay. Banana says guilt turns into shame. Absolutely. Yeah, that's so, what it does. Um, mm -hmm. 15, 12, and nine. How, how old? 15, 12, and nine? Uh-huh. Yeah, so they they 15, 12 and 9, so they are at an age where you can really have a um a honest conversation with them. I think the most important thing when you have kids with a narcissist is that you have to have an age appropriate conversation with them, but be honest. The courts will tell you, "Oh, well don't say anything bad about the other parent and this and that and the other." Well, if you wanted me to describe you better, then you should have behaved better. But if you and and what I'm saying about that is that not that you go and start telling your kids, oh, they're a reprobate and that's a whole recycled pigeon and a, a duck and a bird. You know, you don't tell them that, you know, now nah, I tell mine. I'm just playing. But. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say some everything. My, I, I'm telling you, I'll be like, when she ain't around, I'll be like, this bird, I'm telling you, I'm so sick of this crow. You know what I'm saying? It's just, but you got to have a conversation with them. You got to let them know the truth. You got to let them know, listen, something is wrong. You know, daddy, daddy is, you know, he has you know, we, he, he's getting some help, you know, or even uh, just tell him, you just got to be honest. Don't, don't let somebody guilt trip you into spending time with them. If you don't want to go, just say you don't want to go, especially the 15 year old, because the 15 year old doesn't have to go. If they don't want to go, they, they are at least in my state in in California, a 15 year old is able to make a decision to just say no, or they don't want to go or not. But I think the most important thing is be real with your kids, be honest with them and have a conversation with them about how they feel. If they don't, cause see a narcissist is not going to co-parent with you. That, that that's what you need to understand. And they are going to try just depending on the severity, how far they are on the narcissism spectrum, they are going to try to engage 
in the parental alienation, especially if it's a female. A female is going straight for the parental alienation. A female is definitely, because they don't want the other parent to be seen, a female is very, very jealous, and they are not going to want their kids to be in contact with the other parent because they're going to want to have all of the control. The men are going to engage in it too, just depending on how far up the spectrum they are. But I think the most thing, the, the best thing to do is have an age appropriate conversation with your kids and be honest, boss. That's what I got to say about it. I know Stevie Banana said, I haven't seen or talked to my kid in a year after I told her about her mother. Oh, wow. That's so sad. Oh, yeah. See, the females, the female narcs are the worst. Let me tell you something. I'm going to give y'all a little comic relief. Let me tell you about that female narc. That female narc will make you want to rethink your freedom. Do you hear me? I'm telling you, that that one right there, that rhino with a bow. Woo! But let me tell you something. It will take all of heaven to want to restrain you from just, I'm telling you, that female narcissist, I know because I, I've had to deal with it. On, on the other side that my ex is married to. And let me tell you something. They know how I, they say some of the nastiest things to you. Oh, they, and I'm talking about when I say nasty, they say some of the nastiest things that you would never even dream of saying to another human being. That female narcissist will make you, I'm telling you, they will make you want to rethink your freedom and your salvation. I'm telling you, you don't, don't, when you know that you are dealing with a female narc, don't even play with it. You just go straight to the courts, get everything written up, document everything that, that they do because if if you are dealing with a female narc, even like my situation, if you are dealing with a um, a man that is married to one, or if you are are kings, if y'all are uh, are dealing with one where y'all have children with the female narcissist, she is going to absolutely try to push your buttons every time she sees you, and that's just who she is. That she is a monster. She is from the pit of I don't know what. I don't even know if the devil is he. She worse than the devil, probably. <laughs> Said, get out. Yeah, he don't put her out of hell, okay? He told her to get out. I mean, you know, that's what I gotta say about that. Y'all just gotta be honest with these kids. You know, I'm I'm gonna tell you this, Miss Angel. Um 15, 12, and 9. Obviously, it sounds like um my ex-mother. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me let me handle Miss Angela. Mm -hmm. I mean Miss Angel, I'm sorry. Um, this is what I would tell you to do. Uh, you know, without without disclosing a lot of information to him. Number one, I will get your kids into counseling. In counseling, counselors across the United States are mandated reporters. Don't tell them what to say. Don't tell them how to say what to say. When you make the appointment for them, you let the therapist know, hey, listen, do not tell. Listen, one of the things that turned me off is when parents call me, say the other parent is a narcissist because, number one, I don't know whether you the narcissist or not. So, you know, the other parent is a narcissist. This is what's going on. They're do So when when a parent calls me and they give me too much information, they're a narcissist. They're doing this. They're doing this. And I'm, I'm involved in court. When you do all that, you're too involved in the counseling. So what what. Um, <clears throat> so what what I would recommend you do is. Get them into counseling, call the therapist and just say that, you know, we're having uh, um, some 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 hard times in the parenting. You know, the kids, you know, uh, sometimes they don't want to go visit. Sometimes they don't want to go and they're afraid to say anything because they're afraid that their father's going to be angry. Talk about the symptoms. That's it. And then when they go into counseling, you know, I don't know what your state is like. But um, you go and that counselor is a mandated reporter. They have to document anything that your children say. And you encourage them that this is a safe place. This is a safe place. You can talk, you know, uh, find one maybe that that um, that understands play therapy and get them, you know, just let them keep going. Let them. Everything's going to be documented. And um, it 
I don't know in your state here in the state of Washington, when they're the age of 13, um, they have privileged information. HIPAA laws cover them where you can't get their records. Your other children, though, uh, here you can get their records. So I would recommend putting them in counseling so it can be documented. Number two, the other thing that I would recommend you do is find a good uh, domestic violence advocate. Mm -hmm. um, ask them if you understand, because now it's out there. In the world of psychology, they are, man, and I didn't grab my flyer. I meant to bring my flyer in here. Now in the world of psychology, they are teaching courses uh, in um, the continuing education for uh, narcissism, gaslighting, abuse by narcissism, I mean by a narcissist, so that therapists understand what it is, uh, what it is like. Miss Angel, you talking and I'm talking. How many of you both talking at the same time? You're supposed to be listening. But um, uh, now that therapists are being taught, they have continuing education to teach them about narcissists. So what you can do is you find a domestic violence advocate <coughs> uh, a, and, you know, let them know that you have some concerns and you want to, um, you know, talk to an advocate to find out what can you do legally, you know, to protect your children if you feel like your children are being emotionally abused and let them give you some advice. Okay, she listened. But mm -hmm. let a domestic violence advocate um, give you some advice. You know, say I'm concerned for my children. Um, I'm, I, I'm concerned about my kids. You know, this is what my kids are telling me. What do I need to do if he's not physically abusing them, but he's he's emotionally abusing them and he's causing them to be afraid? So he's forcing them to do things. Mm -hmm. and, and they're afraid and they're complying because they're afraid to say no. So talk, find you a domestic violence advocate in your town. You can call the hotline and they'll give you the resources to connect you to the area. And what you want is documentation, documentation. Remember, everything deals with documentation. The therapist has to document. The therapist is a mandated reporter. The domestic violence advocate can give you some information concerning what you can do. As a matter of fact, you can also go to Judge Anthony Bumpiani's um, YouTube, ch not YouTube channel, Judge Anthony Bumpiani's Instagram. Uh, you can look on my friends, uh, the ones that I have followed and just look and, and he's not a friend of mine, personal friend of mine. I don't know him personally, but just look at the one that I have followed on Instagram and it says Judge Anthony Bumpiani. And he gives you information and reference to dealing with narcissists in the courtroom as well. Because you don't go into court ever calling a, a narcissist a narcissist. But hopefully that's going to help you because, you know, you just have you're doing a good job from what you've just said. You're doing a, a, an excellent job. Mm -hmm. You just need some extra help. And that extra help is not going to come from us judge of judges. It's not going to come from us um, from I was thinking of him. It's not going to come from us coaches because it, we're limited at we, what we can do to help you. But we can connect you with resources. So try that and let us know how that works. OK, let us know how that works. And I will make sure I tell Telsha, too. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's see here. Why don't I have any here? Good. Look. <clears throat> oh, just be real. Put your information up there. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Jess. Be real. You know what? I was going to say something about, um, I was going to, because you know, this is always a question too. You know, they always asking about the new supply. Do you get a lot of questions about the <laughs> Oh, the yes, yes. We want to know about the new supply. Put it in the chat. Yeah, the new we want to know about the new supply. We want to know about the new supply. Chime in if you want to know about a, about the new supply. Can I ask them to throw a one in the chat, boss? Go ahead. I'm looking yeah, to see. Throw a one in the chat if you want to know about the new supply. So we just get that out and over with. Victoria clapping and laughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they got we got one came up about the new supply. Who else want to know about the new supply? Okay. Oh, here they come. Here they come. What about the new supply? Angela yeah. said, what about the new supply? Yeah, I want to know about the new supply. Okay, so let me tell you about this. Let me let me tell you about this this frog with a helmet. <laughs> Hey, hey, before before you say that, let me answer this real quick. She, okay. said, she said, why is a new supply buying my kids with her stupid gifts and money? Child, let me tell you something. They'll yeah. you something. I'm a, and this is from a mature woman. Now, she mature too. Let me tell you something. First of all, that new supply and yeah. that new 
are working their behinds off for you. Yes. Let me tell you something. If, if let me tell you something, I know for a fact the new supply uh that 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 he's married. I, I don't not take nothing that she give. If she <clears throat> comes, there's stuff that I need. I ain't got to buy it because she trying to win her over. So she buy her school supply, bras, draws, perfume, <laughs> clothes. Girl, let her do it because she working hard. She Ooh. working hard on your behalf. So right. I know that you hurt. I know that you I know you hurt. I know you hurt. I was hurt too. And then I came to my senses. I'm like, child, I said, uh, let her buy whatever she knew to. That's less money for me. That's less money I got this. So let them purchase whatever they want to purchase and don't you worry about it. Yeah, you heard that from me. Let them purchase, don't be mad, don't get hate. If she want to spend all her money on your child, child, she doing you a favor. That's for you. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead. Woo! Wait a minute, but you hold on. Let me see. Let me make sure my mic is on on Clubhouse. Yeah, okay, I'm on. So let me tell you. That right there, what what boss said. That's the that's the honest to God truth. Don't that. And now here's what you're gonna know. Once the new supply comes on board, you will know within the within six months if she's a narc or not. Cause narcs don't always get it right. Okay. So sometimes they do run into another narcissist. Okay. And so when it's another narc, what you'll slowly see is that once she gets him where she wants him they're gonna be love bombing each other if it's another narc and then eventually the female will try to pull him away from the child so if you dealing with a narcissist and he get hooked up with another narcissist then you might actually win in that if you don't want your kid over there visiting because she's going to be jealous of your child it doesn't matter the gender whether it's a boy child or a girl child she's going to be jealous okay what you need to know about the new supply is that nine times out of ten the new supply is not new okay it's usually a person a back burner somebody um that has been in the background now sometimes they do get people that don't that they they have never engaged with that's actually the best supply that a narcissist like some people say oh well it's grade a the, the 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 type of supply that a narcissist loves 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 is somebody brand spanking new that's green that don't know their game they love that because they can train them and do whatever they want to to them okay so they love grade a but what trumps grade a is new supply okay but the ones that y'all are usually seeing are the ones that y'all seen at the cookout the ones that y'all have seen at a couple of the family gatherings at the barbecue, the one that put the raisins in the potato salad. <laughs> Ew. The one that put the raisins in the potato salad. The one that the one that just put the potatoes in there and some and, and a couple of herbs and some mayo and just stirred that bad boy up. Got put out the barbecue for the bad potato salad, that part. No, but I'm just saying these are people that you usually know okay or that you have seen they are also ones that a narcissist will triangulate you with okay this is and y'all a lot of times y'all thinking the new supply is new the new supply is not new they are just people that you that that uh that the narcissist is having an off and on uh you know situation with half the time those are people that are narcissists they may be narcs themselves on a lower end of the spectrum or an inverted narcissist and that means that they just like pain you know what i'm saying they like to be off into that kind of you know craziness but the new supply they will pick a new supply that's um that is definitely um lower i mean they're they're not on your level they do that on purpose because they want to you know they just you know the the frog with a helmet that's what i call the narcissist he's a goat they i i can't i talks about him back <laughs> I talk about them birds bad because listen 
What you have to know is that their mission and motive is to destroy the essence of who you are. They, they have to destroy you so you can look up to them. Because if you don't, if they don't destroy that, the essence of who you are, then they, they fear that you will find out who they are. If you continue to watch them at some point, you're going to find out who they are. So they got to work on your psyche. They got to work on your self-esteem. They have to work on your confidence. Everything has to be destroyed. Okay. So you will idolize them and you will put them on a pedestal and you will say that they are the best thing since sliced bread and the bread is molded. Okay. It ain't you. You can't even use the bread. Okay, this is what I want y'all to know. So that new supply, that new supply usually ain't, you know, it, I was a new supply before I wasn't one of those back burners. I was the new supply and I was doing exactly what uh, boss said that uh, the new supply over there was doing. Buying the kids stuff. I mean, uh, buying the Christmas presents, you know, giving them. I was doing all of that. And the mother, she appreciated. She was like, yeah, thank you. Appreciate what they're doing. Because I can, I can guarantee you, if this is a person with half a brain, they won't be there in another year. Okay, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna tell you that if it's a person with half a brain and they are somebody that watches, they are going to absolutely see what's happening. All new supply, the the uh, I, I like to call it the virgin new supply. The virgin new supply, y'all just pray for them because I was one of them. But it's that back burner supply, that one that's been back there in the background that the family knows about and, and forget trying to tell the, the family about the new supply because the family already know about that back burner and the family already know about the narcissist too. They're not just telling you about it. Okay. So you can, you, you know, just don't even try to go to the family and get any help. Cause what you're going to do is whatever you tell them, it's just like telling the narcissist because they're going to tell it. They're going to go back and tell the narcissist. So that's what that's what I wanted to say about the new supply, because that's always a question. You know why the new supply is this and that. So, no, I mean, you know, they just some of them you get them. They just they act crazy. They do their little thing. They want to talk smack or whatever, you know, but you let them keep talking. You just you don't you don't have to worry about them because the narcissist is going to do enough damage on their own. Am I wrong, boss? Absolutely right. You are right. She said up here, she said, um, how long does the narcissist usually, hold on, how long does the narcissist, how long are they usually with the new supply on the average? How long were they with you? Right. I was a new supply and he was with me for 22 years. <laughs> so it, it depends, you know, it depends. See, some of you are still hurt. So you're wait, you're, you're, you're hoping that they're going to break up. That, that may have saved your life being with the new supply. And you got to remember, let me tell you something. What? Hold on, let me turn my other mic on. Let me tell you something. Um, what a lot of people don't understand when it comes to this new supply, that new supply has, tell I need you to mute. Okay, over. let me mute it. Yeah, let me go. I can hear myself over there. Okay. But what you don't understand is that new supply, almost, if you, if, like Telsha was saying, don't say anything. Just because they reach out, just be, a nar, a, think about the new supply wants to make sure you know that they're there. Well, if a new supply got to make sure that you know that they're there, then they don't know that they're there. They mm -hmm. have a look. That right there is telling on themselves because you are insecure. So yeah. you are the insecure. You have started the relationship the wrong way because you hunted me down to make sure that I know that you were there. So if you trying to make me know that you were there, that means you don't know that you were there. So mm -hmm. I already got to see. You got to think like a narcissist now. Ah, tick on you. You don't show me your hand. Mm -hmm. Number two. Um, you know, you, this new supply, what you don't realize is, and some of us have been the side chief. Now, come on. We had a life before we, most of us got right. And some of us have been on both ends of the spectrum, the side chick, the side dude, you know, you know did your dirt, you know, and you know that when you were doing what you were doing, tell me you weren't thinking about the other woman. Yes, you were. Tell me you weren't thinking about the other dude. Yes, you were. Because you were curious to know whether or not he or she was still talking to them and what they were talking about. So you had that little paranoia. So now imagine they with this new supply, they in their mind have made you into a superstar. Mm -hmm. 
have to say nothing. You can be 9,000 pounds, but in their <laughs> mind, you look like Beyonce. You can be the, the most beautiful 9,000 pound man or woman, but to them, you look like Beyonce or you look like who else? I, I, Idris Elba or uh, uh, who else? <laughs> like, uh, 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 who is it? Uh, hold on, what's the guy's name? Boris Cujo. Bo yeah, Boris Cujo. Or who is the other dude that played? Um, what uh, movie did he play in? Nice looking dude, too. I can't think of his I name. Know, he's, he's dark skinned. No, no, no. He's a white guy. Uh, oh, uh, he played a uh, nice looking dude, too. Not he Brad Pitt. In, no, he played in Venom. Oh, OK. Venom. Oh, yeah, he, he's a he's a character in Venom. Morris Chestnut. Yeah. Uh, the dude that played in Venom, that guy right there, uh, him, uh, whoever else y'all like. Michael Ely, Morris Chestnut. Yeah, all of them, all of them. But in, in you have to remember you became a celebrity in their minds. Come on, Danielle, right there. Mm -hmm. You have and, and check this out. See, when they get with this new supply, you got to remember Tom Hardy. That's his Tom name. Tom Hardy, yeah, that's him. Uh huh. That, that brother know he looked good too. But anyway, <laughs> he, our, our bro, our Caucasian brother, know he looked good. <laughs> but um, but check this out. When when they get with this new supply, especially if they did it wrong and you were wronged in the mix, always remember this. Some of you call it karma. Some of mm -hmm. you. What comes around goes around. In the Bible, it says, do not be fooled. God will not be mocked. So what a man sowed, that is what he's going to reap. Ain't no yeah. such thing as a farmer going out and planting corn and expecting tomatoes. It ain't going to happen. Whatever you plant, that's what you're going to get. If you go plant that's a rose, great. expect roses. That's what's going to happen. Some of you guys are waiting for it to happen. You know, stop waiting for it to happen. Live your life. It's going to happen. I promise you, I don't seen it too many times. I don't seen it too much. There's new supply. She's over here with this person thinking mm -hmm. about you. And especially if you quiet and you don't say anything, I know it's going to be painful. I'm a thug. I don't mind slapping and spit out of my mouth. I'm delivered. You know, and thank God I ain't never had to, I didn't, I never had to be put into a situation to test to see whether I was all the way delivered. Thank God. But, you know, but I learned to shut up because I'm the type of person I'll hook you up and say what I got to say. But I took that, I took that and I didn't say a word. And, and you got to remember that, that that new supply wants to know about you. Trust you me. They don't look you up on Google. They yeah. don't look you up on well, LinkedIn. They can do it privately. They don't look you up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're looking you up. They're studying you. You know, yeah. especially when you got people like us that are on camera a lot. They yeah. look to see how you talk. They look to see. So they're comparing themselves to you because in their mind, they're wondering, do she still love him? Does he mm -hmm. still love her? What is it about her? They're competing. They're competitive. And eventually it'd be little things that pop out where you realize, wait a minute. Remember, you got to think like a narcissist. I'm not saying be a narcissist. Think like a narcissist when it comes to, let me hear what they're saying. Because the more they speak, remember the narcissist, mm -hmm. you talk, so you telling on yourself. If you be quiet and watch what the supply does, watch what they say, a lot of times you got to remember they are living off of what this narcissist has told them about you. That's it. Your, That's best it. Bet, yeah. your best bet is not to respond. That mm -hmm. she going to say stuff, he going to say stuff. They're expecting because... They done got them pumped up. They done made you look like they done made you to be a punk like you can't fight. But you know, but we ladies and, and, and gentlemen and we have matured and we don't fight no more. <laughs> you know, that, that'd be a shame to hear about, you know, Telsha from the T or you know Dr. C was out there fighting and they caught it on, on a video. Then it'd be like uh Dr. C and Telsha exposed <laughs> out there fighting. <laughs> yeah. it, but you you do the same thing. <laughs> you, you, even when you want to, you refrain from saying anything. It yeah. is the narcissist will have to change the narrative because mm -hmm. you're not doing what they said that you would normally do. But right. what happens is, is believe you me, I am delivered. Me too. Uh, but, <laughs> but what, what you don't realize is, is that they don't smear your name. And as long as you don't respond or say anything, eventually they have to change their narrative. But you know, just like I know, they, they've they been with this person and now they're starting to see some stuff in this person, you know, and they're starting to see, just like you just said, you see stuff in this person and then they begin to question like, 
was the ex-wife or the ex-husband really that bad? That's so, it. You guys, don't be surprised That's if they right. reach out to talk to you. Don't mm -hmm. be surprised they reach out to talk to you. Don't be surprised they on they on here listening. You know, I don't know, but on here listening. Don't yeah. be surprised or or their pride has gotten in the way because mm -hmm. they know they've done you wrong. They know they bit off something and now they realize they bit off more than they can chew. Now they want you to take that old chicken bird, that chicken bird back. <laughs> yeah, that, uh -huh, that part, that recycle pigeon. Yeah. yeah, they, want, yeah. They, they want you to take that recycle pigeon with that muscular, <laughs> that muscular thigh back. Yeah. You know, that little troll. You know, they, they want you now in their mind, they wishing like, I wish I would never done it. But <laughs> if, they, if they done got involved with this narcissist and this narcissist done, done, done locked them in, spent their money, got these big purchases and stuff, how are they going to pull back out? Because they realized they don't remember what we said in the very beginning of the video. I knew I made a mistake the moment I married the uh, the nurse. I knew I had mm -hmm. made a mistake. And a lot of y'all said the same thing. I knew I had made a mistake. Don't mm -hmm. think for a minute that the new supply, it has dawned on them. But some of them, you know, they stuck in pride. Pride is fear. And they're afraid to say anything because, number one, I done made a mistake. I done took your husband or y'all. You can't take nothing that don't belong to you. So y'all remember on. You can't That's take it from nobody that don't belong to you. And especially narcissists, they community property. So they don't belong to nobody, not even you. Right. That's, community. That's community property. Yes. So you have to remember that 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 other that other that new supply, you know, number one, they ain't gonna reach out and say nothing to you because they embarrassed. They know they done made a mistake. Now, the way that they will reach out to you, and you know, be open to it if they're desperate and they really need to talk to you. You mm -hmm. know, once you get beyond your pain just be open they may reach out to you you know if they reach out to you you know why 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 mistreat them or mishandle them because at one point in time you were the new supply and you don't That's know who was when you were the new supply so you know right now is just a matter of you having to heal and everything and when you get to that healing don't be surprised if they reach out but don't be ugly to them you know uh, don't be ugly to them you know if they got some questions you just you know when we are yeah and let me tell you but no 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 if they got question handle them I don't have a problem with talking to the, you know, to the, uh, to the new supply because I know her heart gonna be broken and I know she gonna need someone to talk to that mm -hmm. understands that I'm gonna be right there, you know, if she need to. I ain't got no problem with that. Mm -hmm. But you got to remember, a lot of them are dealing with pride. They're embarrassed. They're ashamed of what has happened. They realize they have made a mistake. I know now that he or she was lying when they got with me. So don't think, you know, let them go to Jerry Springer. I ain't coming. <laughs> <laughs> Your chat is off the chain, Bob. This keep them up there, Tisha. Shoot, but no, but you guys, you know, you just just remember that the grass is not greener on the other side, y'all. Don't think for a minute that if they did you a certain way, you trained them to mm -hmm. handle you at the highest level of pain. Your pain tolerance is so high, and they have gotten so far with you that when they get with a new source of supply, that pain level on that person is either that high or they're going to take them that high. Because mm -hmm. trust me, narcissists do not change their stripes. And they if don't. You it, if you got it, I promise you she's getting it worse than what you got it because you got away. So mm -hmm. they got to make sure that this one don't get away. See? And what they do is a lot of them will lock them in financially real quick, have babies real quick, but have these big purchases real quick where it's not that easy to get away. You see what I mean? Just be real, said tell Jesus, not me. <laughs> and y'all better know. Because <laughs> she got hands. Uh, uh, she got hands, see? Yeah. See well, that, that. And I'm telling you, narcissists are always going to have teacots, okay? I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna tell you my, 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 my tribe, they know they love them. T Listen, I tell them, I give them the little acronyms. Let me tell you what TCOTs are. TCOTs are those crows over there. Okay. We don't say the H word. We said those crows over there. TCOTs. That new supply don't experience them TCOTs. Okay. Yeah. Narcissists is always going to have those crows over there. These crows ain't loyal. You know what I'm saying? What what the song said? These crows ain't loyal. <laughs> I know what you said. I know. Yeah. So they gonna have some teacots, y'all. So they, cause the narcissist is a teacot themselves. 
Okay, they somebody else's teacot. They forever wanting to get somebody in there and put them as a glorified side chick. So, you know, between the triangulation and everything, uh, that's right, Angela Baker, teacots. That's what they are. Okay, listen, that's how I roll them out. I call it just what it is, okay? But I'm just saying, what she said was right on. That's just, that's just how they roll. They're not going to change. They don't change their stripes. They're zebras. They're going to stay zebras with some tiger legs. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> hey, that's, that's, the, that's the building arc. Right. That's right. Got, a, got a zebra head. Right. Elephant body. Got some uh, giraffe legs. Yup. Yep. Right. See? That giraffe with some short legs around this thing. Exactly. You know? That part. But well, look, Just Be Real has told me a while ago we were done, and I ignored her on purpose because I knew we were going to keep talking. But yeah, we going to we gonna close it up. Let me close it up. So, we, yeah, we're going to close up because I, I got to go <laughs> ahead. I got to take these glasses off and lay down. All and right. Look, so, those of you. Um, that had the opportunity to be at the conference um, this year when I was in Dallas. I, break. Thank you. I just want you guys to know that Telsha is going to be in Atlanta with me, Helen Sadler, your destiny helper. Marcus Monroe said he's going to be there. Uh, we're trying to get some more. Uh, Bridget Griffin, who you guys heard speak um, as well, mm -hmm. is going to be there. And what we're going to do, we're also going to do a table talk. And yeah. so the table talk, if you guys join Helen Sadler, your destiny helper on Mondays at 745, um, I'm going to make sure that Telsha's there. Um, I'm going to check in with Miss Tasha, uh, see if Miss Tasha is going to be there. Of course, myself, um, Apostle Sadler, and uh, we're going to have a table talk for you guys. So we're going to do the conference and we're going to, so it's going to be in Atlanta. Um, I am starting it up. See, that's why you guys got to make sure that you are part of these webinars. When I do these webinars, I need as much, as many people to come as possible because it'll help, you know, uh, decrease, uh, you know, decrease the ticket sale, the ticket, the amount of ticket sales. But when I have to do it by myself, y'all, then I got to go ahead and, and, and do it like I got to do it. It's going to be Thank awesome you, for Atlanta. Yeah, we're going to be in Atlanta. She's going to be in Atlanta. So you get to meet a lot of us in person. And yeah. so I hope that you guys are going to be there in Atlanta. Someone mm -hmm. said, are we ever going to come to Chicago? Oh, uh, I'll try to make it to Chicago. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. I will try to make it to Chicago. Absolutely. I try to hit, I'm trying to hit the main cities, you know, the big cities where a lot of you guys are at. Um, but I am, um, that's okay. You can go back and uh, watch the replay. But those of you that don't know me or don't know Telsha, Telsha, tell them where they can find you at. Okay, y'all can find me on the T on MPD and relationships on YouTube. Your chat is live. When I tell you this chat so lit, I am laughing. I am laughing. My goodness. They got me back up. Oh, Danielle, you're going to be there. Oh, absolutely. Danielle going to be there. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, thank you, Stevie. He's so kind. So, um, yeah, so uh, T on MPD and relationships here on YouTube, on uh, Instagram, I am at underscore the T on MPD. Facebook, I am the T on MPD and relationships. Um, let's see, where else am I? I am on TikTok, the T on MPD. And I think that's it, boss. So y'all, somebody asked if I'm going to come to Long Beach or uh, Los Angeles. Yes, I am coming to California because my sister is in California. So I'm going to come right. make sure that I'm in California with her as well. So yeah. I, will do, I will be doing a uh, conference in Los Angeles. Never know. It could be 2023. You know, hey. 2023 was Atlanta. 2023 can be Los Angeles. I have my eye on the uh, Bay Area. Yes. But um, those of you that don't know me, I am Dr. Carmen Bryant, overcoming narcissist abuse. Please join me. I have a uh, I have a webinar coming up um, this Thursday and Friday. It's the same. It's the same webinar. I'm just doing it two days. Those of you that um, that uh, that can come on Thursday and those of you that can come on Friday instead, uh, we put the link on there. It's overcoming narcissist abuse dot ticket leap dot com mm -hmm. um if, if uh just be real if you put it up there on all my channels is overcoming it's all one word overcoming narcissist abuse dot ticket leap 
Florida.com. Oh, yeah, I got to come to Florida. But I want you guys to join me because some of you guys are hurting really bad. And you guys need to know how to unwind yourself from the trauma bond. And I'm going to be doing a series. So I'm going to have the webinar this week. Those of you that want coaching, you can find me. Uh, uh, you can uh, email me at drcarmenbryant at outlook.com. And you can also email uh, Telsha if you would like to do coaching with her. What's your email address? It's uh, the T on MPD at gmail.com. I'll put it in the chat. Okay. So Thanks you have a choice, you know, if, if you want to coach with me, if you want to coach with Telsha, both of us are uh, coaches and well-qualified. And um, also those of you that are in the state of Washington, uh, oh, we need to do Louisiana too. Oh but, yeah. That would be we good. To New Orleans. We've got to come to New Orleans. Eat some and red beans and rice bef after the yeah. conference. We got to eat red beans and rice after the conference. I will be sleep. I'm, I'm an old soldier. I eat and poop. <laughs> but listen, so so those of you um that um that need counseling, if you are in the state of um Washington, you can email me at Dr. Carmen Bryant at Outlook.com. Same one for coaching. And um just let me know if you're in the state of Washington and what insurance you have. Now, some of some now you know I've been in New Orleans if I pronounce it that way too, but uh, some people are New Orleans. No, it's New Orleans. No. <laughs> But um, yeah, knowledge. But if 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 uh, you are in the state of Washington, you have to email me if I have room because I fill up really really quick. And then those of you that are looking for counsel uh, uh, therapy outside the state of Washington, you can go to BetterHelp.com forward slash Dr. Carmen. They will give you a ten percent discount. And if you're having any kind, of, yeah, the French quarters. And if you have any financial problems, uh, if you have any financial problems, let them know and they will work with you to make sure that you um, that you uh, get into uh, into therapy. Uh, no, Stevie Bananas, you were right. It's French quarters. You were right. Quarters. <laughs> not, not the French quarters. It's the French quarters. Wow. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this evening. I really, somebody asked if we can do this once a month. If she wants to, yeah, I can do this once a month. I can, I, I, whenever boss calls me, I will make time for her. Just no trust and believe. She got that type of clout over here. When she need me, I'm coming, y'all. I will be here. Did y'all enjoy yourself? I enjoyed we'll it. We will do it once a month then. So <laughs> I will make sure she's on here once a month. Yeah, we're going to do that. And then y'all make sure, hey, go and look, I'll put these glasses on my head like I, I really can. I mean, I can see, but I need to put these glasses on so I can read. My bad, I got excited. But listen, <laughs> listen, I need you guys to go and register uh, on the uh, don't wait till the last minute. Come on, my my black folks, my my Caucasian folks, my Korean <laughs> folks, my Asian people. Come on now, uh, my rainbow tribe. Y'all don't wait till the last minute to do stuff now. Y'all go over here and and um and register for the webinar fifty four ninety nine for the webinar. If you want to do the whole thing for two hours with the coach and listen. Most of you guys, when most of the time when people come and you miss it and then they talk about it, the first thing you say is, I wish I would have been there. You don't even know who's going to be there. You never know. But you guys need to register. Go in and register. I'm telling you, I got some good information. I am I am what you call radical. I'm a radical therapist. I'm a well-known therapist. You know, radical means to the root. I don't play with this stuff. I get to the root. I believe, you know, I'm, I am a retired United States soldier. And mm -hmm. one thing I believe is we ain't going to fall together, but I promise you I ain't going to leave you behind. I'm going to come back and get you. You know, and my, my goal, we have a passion to help people and mm -hmm. especially women. I have a passion to help women because I am a woman. I understand what it feels like. And Stevie Bananas, you know, um, I, I've never been a man. I'm not trying to be a man. Don't know what it's like to be a man. Don't claim to be a man. But I do men hurt just like women hurt. Men yeah. have emotions and feelings just like women have emotions and feelings. Society has taught them, you know, big boys don't cry. You better not cry. You better not express your emotion. So a lot of times in pain and hurt, men will show aggression. They'll show anger instead. And in yeah. reality, and there's a lot of men that I've had. Thank you so much. There's a lot of men I've had in therapy and really their aggression and their anger is really hurt and pain. And they 
don't know how to express the hurt and pain because society tells them that they're men and they're not supposed to. Now imagine mm -hmm. we going to the movie with Stevie Bananas or something and we watching a horror movie. He's supposed to keep us safe and he's screaming just as loud as us. <laughs> now, you know, we fight, and we don't fight Stevie Bananas. Yeah, we don't, we don't fight him for screaming too. <laughs> and he's screaming, we screaming. We go, hey, we gonna stop screaming just to look at him. What's you screaming for? Hey, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but, you see, but you see, but you see how society has taught us. So you know, even though. I am a woman and I can speak to a man from the point of a, <laughs> he's all laughs. Yeah. You know, I can speak to a man from the point from a mother, from a coach, from a therapist, from an auntie, but I cannot speak to a man as a man will speak to a man because I don't know what he motions are like. I read them in the book, like when Bishop Jakes, you know, wrote it, he talks about the he motions, but I don't know what it feels like. You see what I mean? Only a man knows what that feels like. And sometimes a man needs a man to speak to a man and to encourage a man and let him know it's okay. And it's okay to have emotion. It's okay to cry. Now I have some breakdown in my office and that's fine. You know, but one Thing that a man can't stand is for you to go talk about them when they do cry mm -hmm. you know so ladies when you have a man one thing when a man says i don't trust you and i heard this from uh, i don't know if it was bishop jace or uh, miles monroe but when a man says that he can't trust you he's saying that i can't trust you with my emotions because you'll use them against me right he says that she don't trust a man is because you probably done cheated and that man said this mm -hmm. and so listen one of my passions is to help people. And you know, you need to come to the webinar. You need to come to the conferences because this right here, you invest in, you, we invest in wigs that cost six, seven, eight hundred dollars We invest in, in uh, hair. I know mine costs anywhere between two, uh, six, seven, eight, eight. I was about to say 8,000. That's a lie. I ain't going to wear no $8,000 wig unless somebody buy it for me. But a thousand dollar wig. <laughs> you know that if I would have sold that wig, that's a thousand dollar wig. We invest in fingernails, which I need to go do. Invest in fingernails, these eyelashes, you know. But we invest in all this, you know, our Botox and facelifts and tummy tucks and butt uh, Brazilian butt. I can't do no Brazilian butt lift. My butt be all the way up on my neck. <laughs> No, please don't do that. Oh, I can do that. I got, we taking the shoulder and wiping. <laughs> get, my wallet, get my wallet off my shoulder. Right. But, but we invest. But you know, we we invest. I made the wig, and, and she said a one thousand dollar wig. No, I made the wig, and it's worth one thousand dollars. I didn't pay that much to make my own wig, but to sell it retail, that was a thousand dollar wig. That one that you guys see, that blonde one. That's a thousand dollar wig that I made. You see what I mean? But wow. what I'm saying is, is that we invest all this money on things, on clothes and, and, and mm -hmm. all this. But the thing that we don't invest in is our mind and our emotions. That's and then right. we wonder why we keep getting into these type of relationships. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, you know, why your heart being torn, why you keep getting, cause you got, you got a broken heart. Your heart is bleeding. You got all these holes in your heart, you know, but you won't invest in yourself. You know, everything is not free. You know, a lot of people just want free 99. Everything in life is not free. Everything, when, when not, you know, when something is worth something is not free. You know what I mean? First class seats are not free unless they upgrade you. Somehow pay for it. Everything is not free. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. You know what I mean? So yes. that's a, for this evening. We love you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Thank you for coming you on. Welcome. I know you, you got to get baby girl up in the morning. I got to yes. eat. And it I takes a whole hour to get her up to. Yeah, yeah, this one in here about the same. I tell y'all, they just laughing in the chat. Listen, I got one request. If y'all, if y'all want us to do this every month, y'all need to invite some folks to the chat. Y'all yes. like and share, like and share, like and yes. share, so they can come and get. Some yes. of them said they hadn't laughed in a while, so that's yes. good. Yes. That's what we do, you know. Absolutely, okay, boss is funny. And, and and I can I can get real real nutty with it too. So you know I got I got that no y'all need to see us when we back there in private eating. <laughs> Danielle was there. Danielle was me. Danielle was you. Uh, Apostle Sadler. Uh, Miles Monroe. Uh, Miles Monroe. Uh, 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 Brother Monroe. Uh, Marcus Monroe. Uh, and when we were eating, and then his wife too. Oh, I love her. Boy. <laughs> 
she she rolled right along with us and we had a great time so imagine yeah, you know this is just some simple talk that danielle said laughter soothe the soul you back there laughing mm -hmm. too i know right. But hey, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys so much. Hey, make sure tomorrow, 745 Pacific Standard Time, which is 1045 Eastern Time. And hold on, I'm looking at my fingers. And 945 Central Time. Make yes. sure you guys are on Clubhouse, Apostle yes. Sadler, Apostle Helen, Helen Sadler. Let me look. What is the topic tomorrow? It's the same topic we've been having, right? Um, tomorrow, I think it's a part three. Let me look. Did she she put got, no, she hasn't got a post yeah, yet. Yeah, okay. All right. She hasn't posted yet, but at 7.45 uh, Pacific Standard Time, 9.45 Central Time, and hold on, I'm looking at my fingers, uh, 10.45 um, Eastern Time, make sure you go on Clubhouse, look, it'll say Helen Sadler, and then you'll see me and Telsha and Tasha, mm -hmm. and you'll see Karen on there. And so make sure, and Danielle, Danielle's the moderator. You'll see us That's all cool. on Clubhouse. So you guys make sure you come on Clubhouse. Um, uh, oh, what, yeah, what is, what, what's love got to do with it? Part three. Part three, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. what is, what's love got to do with it? Or what is love? Is it, what is love, right? What is love? Shreema said, "Is what is love part three? What I is love? It's, it's, I know it's a part three because we did. We did. She's going a little deeper into the subject uh, yeah. each week. Yeah. So you guys make sure you join her on Clubhouse. We will be there tomorrow, and all of us are speakers on there. We are uh, her guests on there. So mm -hmm. I appreciate every single one of you." Thank you, Miss Telsha. I am so looking Thank forward to when you come back up here. I think you're supposed to be. Are you coming up here for December? Um, uh, I think uh, Gerald is going to be there December, but yeah. she was talking about uh, first, like January time frame. So I'll, I'll, uh, I should be a first quarter should be okay. back up there, like around okay. January time frame is what she said. So we'll we'll see what what happens with that. I I was literally coming to sit down, but uh, yeah. What I had, that's what you said. <laughs> You should have said, said something. See, you should have said something, but you ain't said no. You ain't said no. Oh, oh my camera! Can you see me? I know what you clicked the camera off. I didn't. The camera just turned off. Boss's camera turned off, y'all. I gotta close it out. No, let me stop. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, well y'all can't see me, and I can't turn the camera. I don't know what I just did. Hold on. Okay. I don't know what I did, y'all, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut off because that's it. That's the end of my camera. Bye, right, everybody. Hey, you guys have a wonderful evening. Love you guys. I'm waving like y'all can see me. Okay, you can see me on Instagram. Love y'all. Love you, Telsha. Love you. Love you, boss. I'll see y'all. We'll see you next time. Bye bye, Instagram. Love y'all, Clubhouse. Good night.